dear colleague, friends, and uh, comrade, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are, I greet you with all the greetings that you like to hear. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Today is another day talking about what is my charitable organization. The title of the talk today is but for the five to five, 20 types of charitable organization between the one eye, the organization which have one eye only, or the one who has quint, or the one who has like hur al ain, gamila, yani, beautiful, attractive. And I'd like to thank my colleague uh, Aya for preparing the presentation. And here we go, let us start. While I was in Turkey and Qatar, as I mentioned to you last week, in a very, very intensive travel between two countries, uh, uh, five cities, I've done more than 15 workshops, 19 meetings, and all these kind of things. I was shocked to hear a fatwa uh, given by a renowned scholar about women organization in Turkey, working in for Syria. It shocked me. Because I have heard from such human organization that this scholar did not sit down with them to ask for their opinion before, before declaring his fatwa. It's very easy to give fatwa. It's very difficult to start talking to the different and relevant people before you declare the fatwa. And one of the problem ha was, is one of the uh, organization leaders, she was in Syria at the time when the fatwa was declared, and she felt that people or men were harassing her. In Arabic, harush, harassing her. She was vexed, very, very extremely upset. Okay? And this made me very upset, unfortunately, as well. Uh, while I was in Istanbul, later on, I thought about the idea of talking about what are the different types of organization, charitable organization. I call it charitable organization because I don't want to only talk about humanitarian or developmental or social, but collectively in my art terminology. And I classified them into 20, 20 types. Be patient with me to understand is your organization that you support is one of them or not? Number one, the one-eyed organization. Like I can see now, I only see with one eye. The squinting organization, the organization which has a squint. The totally paralyzed organization. The crippled organization. The limping organization. The blind organization. The idiotic and behavior organization, the prostituting organization, the mummified, you know, the mummies, the Egyptian mummies, the mummified organization, the unconscious organization, that's 10. The drugged, hypnotized organization, the teen-aged organization, the teen-aged, foolhardy organization, the hypocritic, hypocritical organization. Number 14, the ice the frozen organization. These are on the negative side, 14 organization. On the positive side, the mature organization, the impacting organization, the forward-looking visionary organization, the durable, enduring, long-standing organization, the beautiful eyed Haura organization, the reference organization. 20 types of organization. Please be patient with me to listen to the definition, my own definition of this organization and to relate it to the organization that you support. But before we start, you know, I, I do two images on my, I, you, you will receive it maybe by tomorrow on the YouTube for actually one with a squint, with one eye, the other one with a squint, two men, okay? 
we must believe first before we start going to classify other organizations. In what? The ultimate reality, six points. Six points we have to discuss before we start in classifying organization or making different type of organization. What are these reality? Number one, the real owner of humanitarian, social, developmental fund are the poor, widows, and needy. They are the real owner, whether we like it or not. It's number one. Number two, we are, as employees, hired by the poor. Or the poor people's employee. We are the workers, as chairman, as CEO, as head of department, as directors, are employed by the poor people or hired by them. Number three, the real owner of the organization are not the board of trustees, the board of directors. It as the board of the poor and needy people. These are the real owner of the organization. The board of the poor and needy people. Number four of the reality and the ultimate reality is those who spend their money on us as employees are the poor people who have no money to spend on themselves, their children or their relatives. So you can imagine the contrast the contradiction, the poor spending on us because this is their money. Number five, poor people, which are the owner of the organization, will not die. Will not die. Listen to this. If we overspend their money on our trivial and necessary useless expenditures, but will still be alive but suffering until the history before telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how bad people we were when we were managing their money. I have to put this as earrings in our ears. Number six, the only ones who will make our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, happy with us, will take us by their own hands and placing us in heaven are orphans, widows, needy, displaced, destitute, refugees, sick people, not the president, not the chairman, not the CEO, not the minister, nothing. This sex ultimate reality has to be there before we start to talk about classifying our organizations. Now we can go to talk about each of the 20 categories that I have put for them. The one-eyed organization. What is this? Is the organization which is international, international organization, and you're working on the globe. Or national organization working in multiracial, multicultural, multiling, multilingual, multi-faith, but with one culture, recognizing one culture or recognizing one language. This becomes like the one-eyed organization. Cannot see the rest of the world. Cannot see the rest of the community. This number one, the one-eyed organization. And we can talk about it. It comes in the philosophy of thinking, in the school of thought, in the language, everything. Number two, the squinting. Or squinted or the, or the organization which is suffering from squint. What is this? Is the organization that having conflicting visions. You don't know vision from the left to the right, from the north to the south, from the east to the west, from forward or back. It's going around, like merry go around. Squinting does not have a vision. Every now and then it, it, it have a contradicting vision. This number two. The third is the totally paralyzed. What do we mean by totally paralyzed organization? It's led by people who are in the 70s of their age or the 80s of their age. It's not bad. But they are running it for decades with no change. It becomes stagnant. For decades and was not progressing and have no young people. And have no young people. In the organization. This is a totally paralyzed organization. It's become paralyzed. 
The crippled organization number four is the organization led by people in the 70s and 80s again for decades and is having a few young people trying to push forward anything and they become like a crippled organization because of this few young men and women trying to do something. But the old guards are blocking them. This is the crippled organization. The limping organization is the organization depending on one donor or on foreign funding and no local fund, no diversity of fund. Could become limping, cannot go anywhere. Number six, the blind organization only read paper which is not relevant. The blind paper driven organization is the organization implementing out of date policies, procedures which are as well contradicting the contemporary circumstances of the culture of the societies. It's out of date and contradicting as well. This is the blind organization. Number seven, the idiotic and behavior organization. Is the organization always running after funding fame without considering the consequences? Always jumping here and there. Like acting like idiots. No taste, no color, no shape, no characters. Number eight is very difficult to say and to hear. Prostituting organization. What does prostitution have to do with our charitable work? Keep selling its values, moralities, histories, as well as any other things for anyone to pay. Today they are white, tomorrow they are black, after tomorrow they are brown, and all this, like, Every day it has a different culture, just looking only after how to get the money without any value or any culture or any, and selling everything for cheap. This is the prostituting organization. The mummified organization, which becomes like a mummy. It is that stopped its development and became confined to a certain era of time. The golden era of the founders, the golden eras of the 70s or 60s or the 50s or 70s or 90s or 2000, still living in the past, become mummified. Okay? And does not come out of it. Okay? We call it mummified organization. The unconscious organization is the isolated, withdrawn, and out of touch organization. Alas, it is really not, not, not existing in reality in the society. Isolated, withdrawn, and out of touch organization who is not aware of what's happening in its society because it's isolating itself. It's always hypnotizing its staff with unrealistic and unrelated values culture, habits, which are strange to its society. That's what I call unconscious organization. Number 11, the drugged. You know when you take a drug? When somebody take a drug? Take a drug, yani hash, or take uh, opium, or take uh, anything. The drug the hypnotized organization is the organization taking sleeping tablets? What are the sleeping tablets? What are the sleeping tablets? First one is to be relying on renowned government officers or officials. Number two is to have a generous donation from one or two individuals every year. Halas, it's like giving them the case of life. Number three, uh, having some good relationship with media organizations so they have unrealistic, fake media covering for their activities. Number four is uh, 
uh, having paid coverage for the media to say so the media can say whatever they want them to say. This is the drugged, hypnotized organization. Number 12, the teenager. You know what the teenager age? The girls and boys keep changing their image, keep changing their behavior and attitude every now and then. It's an organization which is as a, a fast moving, haphazardly changing its path and gasping to follow the new strange values, ideologies, and projects, and having no credibility for or from the community. Always attracted to oblivious, dubious, and strange moves and partners. This is the teen-aged organization. It might be 50 years old in, in, in the actual age, but their behavior is like a teenage girl or a boy. Number 13 is what is the hypocritical organization? It's an organization which is always lying. Always lying, especially when it comes to the administration cost and comes to the number of countries and offices they have globally. And instead of saying that we have representatives, they said we have offices. As well as becoming thrilled to any harm or shame affecting other competitive organizations. Oh, subhanallah, I told them. They didn't listen to me. They've been very happy to see the shame and come to other organizations. Spreading rumors and lies about other organizations. Have you heard what they have done? Oh. Hypocritic. When it falls with other organization, what it does is spread everything outside and become excessively using bad mouthing methodology to bad mouth other organizations. This is what I call it hypocritical organizations. Number 14, the iced and the frozen organization. What does it mean, iced? When you put something in the deep freezer, it becomes frozen. The organization, it's the organization led by security and the military officers. I don't attack them as security and military officers. But why I'm saying this, first of all, the mission of security and military is a sacred mission. Sacred in protecting the country, then sacred in protecting the individuals. This is number one. That's why I don't want them to deviate and come to deal with other issues. Not sacred like those. Secondly, their upper dictating personality. The military is ordering all the time, not negotiating, not having a dialogue, because this is the way they have been brought up as police officers as well as military officers, dictating personalities. But if you decide, if you decide that you want to use them, I have a place for them as well. In sports organization, because they are more fit than the other normal individuals as individuals, as well as they have been trained the difficult way of life. Two use them in the educational organization, training people to acquire patience, living hard life, having the strong will and tenacious power. Because most of them, particularly the military, live on the mountains, maybe even, the, even security in the middle of the desert, no man's land. We can use them in this organization. Scouting. I use them there. Expeditionary and exploratory organization. One would like to cross the mountains, to cross the seas, to cross the desert. We can use them as trainers as well. I have called this group the iced frozen organization. Why? Because it is members, which is the military officers and the security officer always taking orders from their superiors. 
and have not been trained to discuss, negotiate, create dialogue, or take initiatives. And these are some of the military and security occupational hazards. Every, every occupation has its hazards. This is the organization number 14, which is the iced and frozen organization. Let us go to the good side of the organization. The mature ones. What is the mature organization will be? First of all, it's been built. It's already built. It is internal and the external infrastructure across many decades. And it's keep building. It is structure internally and external. This number one. Number two has been led successfully and successively in a transparent way by diverse, distinctive, distinguished leaders. Everything is seen and clear. This number two. It represents different cultural, racial, faith groups, generations, and gender insight. It represents all this. It's number three. Having many and diverse partnerships with whom? With local, regional, international organizations, as well as government. This is number A, four. Number five, it's social impact. It has a social impact to already be measured. Its social impacts on different societies have been felt and measured through it is decades of work in water, sanitation, health, education, uh, empowerment, training, rehabilitation, all this. The social impact has produced publication, research papers and studies in different fields of work. Benefited many, many impoverished and marginalized societies. This is a mature, a mature, a mature organization. This is number 15. Look at your organization. Number 16, the impacting organization. Organization which is making impact on whom? On the society, on the citizen, on the people. It is a mature organization that made its impact on different societies through what? One, implementing effective, impacting programs and projects needed by the public. Two, producing studies and research papers in partnership with the relevant social and academic institution. Number three, organizing many conferences and workshops to empower the civil society sector and its organizations. Number four, bridging the gaps with the different critical masses. You know, the critical masses is something we need to create. And an institution on local ground, regional ground, and international ground. This is where you can measure the impact. We can say impacting or impactful organization. Number 16. Number 17, the forward-looking, visionary organization is the mature organization who is having voluntary academy, volunteering academy, academy for volunteerism, to build the future leadership from among us, its own citizen, citizen of its own country, or other countries. Having suggestion and new ideas, departments, New ideas department, okay? Continuously to bring new ideas. Having a, a, a department of a strategy. Department of a strategy as well, because if you have a strategy, continuously having st different strategies, that means that are forward-looking and visionary organization. Number 18, the durable, enduring, long-lasting organization. What does it mean? It's another mature organization, okay? Another mature organization that spread the seeds of its fruitful trees, of ideologies, policies, philosophies, culture, and values, and manners in. Where, where do you spread the ideology? Number one, the fertile soil of other organizations. 
So the other organization accept what they say, what they do. Number two, to the hearts and minds of the believing people in this mission, of young people, different countries. So to other organizations, second, to the young people in different countries. The third one, inside the philosophy of thinking of the intellectual thinkers, which is extremely important, you have to get through the mind and the soul of the intellectual thinkers. Writers, novelists, theologians, theologians, huh? with your ideology, to change such ideologies and ideas into written articles, opinions, ideas, ideologies, philosophies, culture, poems, novels, stories, dramas, songs, music, and different arts. You have to get through the people who make the humanity sing around their thoughts and ideas. This is the durable, enduring, long-lasting organization. Number 19 is the beautiful eyes, Ashur al -Ain. If you have an organization is as beautiful as Hur al -Ain, what does she do? It's a mature organization. That's always beautifying itself. Doing what? Doing what? Uh, beautifying herself to societies with different, diverse, and essential community services. Her beautification is what she provides to the community as an organization. That's why she looks like Khur al -Ain. Everyone loves her as an organization. What is that? First of all, new realistic needed community initiatives. Every now and then, they gave through their volunteers or their different department new initiatives, which realistic and needed, not hypothetical. Be temporary, provide temporary and long-term solutions to community problems. Deeply rooted, complicated community problems. They can do that for you. Number C, developing new philosophical theories and moral visions, building the society's social infrastructure and strengthening its social bonds. It always, always, always thinking deep of how to serve and save the society. Number uh, D, offering community cooperation with other relevant organizations. Cooperation, cooperation, very important that each organization should cooperate with others. Offering community co co cooperation with other relevant organizations to enhance building partnership with local, regional, and global institutions. This number uh, A, B, C, D. Uh, D. Number E, creating and promoting new young leadership. New young, diverse, talented, and successive leaders. Doing what? Raising the public social awareness, which is the big fight and big, big, big dilemma for all of us. How can we raise the public awareness? Number F, uh, number F having different roles for children, have roles, young people, have role, elderly have role, women have roles. Have all these different roles. This is called the beautiful, the beautiful Eid Haura organization. Number 20, the reference organization. What do you mean by ref like, like Actually, when I came here to UK 40 something years ago, used to have something called a reference library. A reference library, it's not like uh, the Birmingham Medical School Library. No, it's a reference library for the whole county, for Wales, for England, for uh, Scotland. You go to there to find all the names of the reference papers, books, textbooks, and others. It's a mature organization catering around her 
the following who are who are going to be around their visionary leaders from other organizations who are having different intellectual capabilities ideologies cultures and philosophy of thinking from amongst the academics practitioners and professional experts in the relevant subjects to become to be, ah, listen to this gathering all this around here to become what to become the fuel torch illuminating research's path for the spheres of life inside the core the corridors of time gathering all these academics practitioners and professional experts around here to become the fuel torch eliminating research's path for the spheres of life inside the corridors of time such reference library as uh, such a reference organization becomes a reference for every applied professional developmental social humanitarian and non-humanitarian specialism later on wisdom 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 why all this fuss was it to do with the imam was the, the scholar who made the fatwa or the organization there are three things we need to discuss why I'm, why why i'm saying this one which if we don't have them in our societies we will never have the mature beautiful eyed reference impacting uh, organization uh, visionary and others the good ones but we'll have the bad ones look at the country see the available provided political atmosphere and the relevant civil liberty spaces do we have them if we have them we have the good ones if we don't have them we'll have the bad ones a good 14 bad apples and six good apples the empowered legislative government departments if in this country your country or somebody else's country does not have uh, the legislative officers empowered will definitely produce the 16 bad apples organizations the effective and leading role played by the board if 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 the boards of the organization are very static yeah and very uh, out of date of course you will never produce the good kind of organization so the board the political system and the legislative departments have to look after this uh, look at this before actually to, to to enable you either to go to the six good apples or to make the 14 bad apples my message to you young people is what as i've been observing together it's extremely easy for any one of us to produce a fatwa or opinion but became a compelling duty upon our credible renowned scholars to do the following before producing the fatwa a b c number one to listen to everyone men or women somebody that we like somebody we don't like to listen to everyone every concerned party not to pick and choose whom we like as it happened with the fatwa mentioned last month number b to realize and understand the different specialized subject related to the fatwa the theologians scholars the theologian scholars will say that we are mufti fine there's no problem but when you come to make fatwa on agriculture on water on economy women's rights you have to go to ask the specialist it's not your cup of tea without asking the specialists you cannot uh, issue a proper fatwa uh related subjects such as economical agriculture legal educational political constitutional medical engineering uh, humanitarian, charitable, developmental, social, family-related, psychological, women in organizational work, and others. Don't touch a fatwa. Don't, don't declare a fatwa before you go to the relevant expert in the subject. 
Number C, to realize and measure the impact of your fatwa, negative and positive. Like what happened to this uh, young woman who was harassed by people inside Syria. The, to, the, to realize and measure the impact, negative or positive, of their fatwa on the public. And in particular, those disinterested, tendentious, malicious, sneaking individuals among the general public who are trying to stir distractions, create divisions, and fragment the society's social bonding and infrastructure. Those people will be very happy to pick up any fatwa and play with it. This is number one. Produce a fatwa, we have to go to A and B and C. It's easy to produce a fatwa. Two, to make judgment on people, if they are not there, you wait till they come back. Okay? If they have lost something, you wait till they explain to you how did they make the loss. Okay? Somebody was sick, you wait till you ask him or her what was the cause of his or her sicknesses. Don't speculate in the absence of the people or uh, without asking why did you lose your job and other and keep speculating. No, no way. Number three, don't be so confident that you know the intention of people. I know him. I can see his intention or intention. Oh my God. How do you know his intention? How do we know the intention? The intention is something only known by Allah and the individual concerned. The way the woman dressed. Oh, you know this big, oh. The woman, the, 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 a, a stupid behavior by a young boy. Oh, it's because I know. Don't, don't, don't worry. I know, I know how his family, how his neighbors. How do you know? Keep judging people by under intention. Who are you? Who are you? Even some of the prophets do not know the intention unless Allah inspired them to know the intention of people. Don't be so confident of saying that I know the intention of the people in front of me. This is in issuing the fatwa. And let me take you, and this contradicts the ethics of the Quranic verse, which is saying, all you who, who have believed, if there comes to you a disobedient one with information, investigate. Lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become over what you have done Regretful. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسقكم برابع فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين. This is the Quranic verse. It became a compelling duty to all of us now to do what to build civil society organization and to allow such civil society organization to gain its maturity through the required. Parameters, policies, principles, values, manners, societal culture, inside different social and humanitarian paths. Labud, labud, labud. It's must, it's must, it's must. We must build. Brothers and sisters, don't stop building civil society organizations. It is, it is a challenge of the time. Don't stop building credible, effective, leading civil society organizations and sector who are living at the era of the time of institutions and institutional building. We have to build this kind of strong, capable institutions and organizations.
and to make our organization we have this is here come back to conclude we have to make them the effective visionary durable and enduring organization having most beautiful images of how of how are the power of young people the wisdom of the elderly the ideological sobriety and calmness with the wisdom in their performance we have to build these ones the last six good apples i've got 20 apples in my presentation 14 bad apples and six good apples we have to keep building organization becoming the last six good apples from number 15 to number 20. it became a duty on us again and again and again not to build organizations who are limping Crippled, paralyzed, squinting, one-eyed, teen-aged, idiotic, frozen, mummified, and having no clear or measured impact on this fight. No way. Alas, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Your role should be is not to lead your societies. No, 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 no. But to lead humanity. Listen to this. Your role is not to lead a small society, a small avenue, a small neighborhood, a small district, a small township, a small country. You lead humanity. That's your role, young people. How to lead humanity? Through education, learning, and acquiring knowledge. Number one. Because the first verse in the Quran was read, which is learn, know, comprehend. Gaining experiences. You must keep gaining experience day in and day out. Experimenting. And face challenge, facing challenges. You must face challenges. Don't be as scared of facing challenges. Keep facing and meeting the challenges. Through research studies, nothing to say, I have it here. You have it here, not here. Research, 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 which is most of our organization do not believe in research, unfortunately, not invest in research. And most of our donors, unfortunately, 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 when we talk about research, they don't pay any money. Research studies, criticism, discussing and endorsement communication you have to communicate with others you are talking about societies you are talking about humanity you are talking about people you have to communicate acquaintance complementarity you have to apply complementarity you have to network and build partnership you can't lead humanity unless you do all this and more you have to have successful planning and leadership Knowledge transfer, futuristic induction, analytical deductions, inference referencing, finding out opinions and solutions, training, rehabilitation, participation, uh, experiences, <coughs> transfer and <coughs> experience transfer and, uh, and empowerment, experience transfer. Transfer of knowledge and experience. Studying and, re and rewriting history. History has been written by the, by the bad people, unfortunately. But studying and rewriting history and the different cultures. You should put the big no. No for extremism. No for discrimination. No for exclusion. No for politicization. And no for nepotism. Five no's. Laying down the foundations for social justice and freedom, leading to what? Leading to equality, brotherhood, and building societal infrastructure. It has to lead to something. Adopting the different kind from you know, we can we can import or adopt some good good things from different countries which are suitable, relevant, and does not conflict with our moral values 
culture and principles. We should invest, invest, invest in children, young people, and women, and make them the core group of our future leaders program. We should invest also in young people's initiatives. We should not exclude or ignore or sideline them. We should be enforcing the principles of civil state. We need civil state. We do not need autocratic state. We do not need the uh, dictatorship state. We do not need, we do not want military state. We do not want security state. No, no, no. Civil state. Agreeing and, de and defining the required civil liberty space. How much is the civil liberty that we need? When we have civil liberty, we have pioneering, we have innovation, we have discoveries, we have all this magnificent contribution of every citizen in the country to humanity, not only to our country, to humanity. Agreeing and defining the required civil liberty space, investing in building social services, civil sector. Social services, civil sector. I say it again. Social services, civil sector. Building the civil society sector and this effective independent organization. See, all this will make the strong bonding which lay the, which will make the foundation of any strong, advanced, civilized state. Investing in building a stronger formal state economy. We need the state economy. We need to strengthen our state economy. Based on what? Based on our local productivity. Don't rely on importing goods from outside because they are cheaper. No, they are expensive. They are more expensive than the expensive product that you produce in your own countries. You know why? Because you give them the money to develop and their own industry and deprive yourself from investing this money in producing and developing your own product. But your own productivity should be based on agriculture. Agriculture means independence. Agriculture means uh, uniqueness of the power, of the political power of the organization, also of the country itself. Investing in building a stronger formal state economy based on local productivity, particularly through agriculture and livestock industries. And encouraging as well the low, the, the informal state economy. There's informal state economy and there's formal state economy. You have to encourage both, but both of them have to push forward the philosophy of local productivity based on agriculture and livestock. Framing in his book, he talks to the mind and the hearts and the souls of people. Framing and producing the new philosophies, cultures, social ideologies, not only benefiting your societies, but other sides. Don't keep waiting for people to send to you their philosophy of thinking, their culture, their ideas, their values, and you say, at the receiving end, no way. The time has come that you lead this kind of intellectual sector. Writing the new laws, policies, and creating wider visions, not only to save the local communities from the corrupt, unipolar, unjust system, but the whole world, save the whole world with it is regional and the global organization, and more and more. And, more. and this is your role, young people. Please, 
talk to the mind, talk to the heart, talk to the soul of the people, as well as talk to the mouth, the food, and the drink, and others. You are leaders, and you must become the leaders of humanity, as I believe in all of you. I take this opportunity of thanking you very much for being patient with me for the last 47, 48 minutes. But really, look back at your organization and see which one it fits. Is it amongst the, 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 the last six good apples or the first 14 bad apples? Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope to see you again next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.